see if I can send it you, just in case you can't get it. I think it must be at your end, Fatma. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I, I'll record now, and I will try to send you, okay? Yeah? Um, I think you have been sent the questions. Um, I saw the questions, Fatma. Yeah. Okay. I, I will try to record and then we can do it. I'm really sorry, Fatma, um, but it looks like Billion are okay. So maybe you're- Yes, we have the questions. But, but the video is no good. Fatma, are you able to hear the teacher? Not really. Fatma, are you hearing us? Okay, I, I'll record this and we'll see if we can send you it later. Okay, we'll just wait for the recording. It, it might... Yeah, we are able to hear the teacher, but we are able to... Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to show the experiment. I will record it, Fatima, and I will send you the, the video um, as soon as I can after this, okay? All right. So I will, hang on, I will just record. I'm recording now. Okay. So everybody, um, here is the chemicals. Here are the chemicals I want to use today. Uh, this one is called potassium dichromate. Um, they ask questions about K, uh, on KCSI about this, orange potassium dichromate. This is a potassium manganate or potassium permanganate, and I call it purple potassium manganate. I do that because then I learn the color with the name. So if I call it purple potassium manganate, then I remember. This is... Here it is. This is it uh, in a tube, so you can see it is a purple color, uh, and I will be using it in a short while. Um, the other chemical which I will be using is this one, which is bromine. These are very hazardous chemicals. This one um, here is toxic. This sign means toxic, poisonous. Uh, on this one, we have a sign. Sometimes they ask you about the signs. This sign is a new international sign. It means that if you uh, drink this, uh, it will damage you inside uh, genetically. Okay, it means that it will do you harm inside. So it's very hazardous. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the other camera and explain. Okay, um, you do not need to know, uh, you do not need to be able to write equations using KMNO4. Potassium manganate, purple, if you can remember to name it like this, potassium manganate. Every time, if you see its name, if you remember purple potassium manganate, it will help you. And if you can remember orange potassium dichromate, this will help you remember the colors, okay? Because they very often ask for the color change, okay? So can anybody tell me what color purple potassium manganate and orange potassium dichromate go when they react with something? Can anybody tell me? Anybody tell me? If anybody from, um, uh, from Billion, can you tell me what colors they go. Purple goes what color? Orange goes what color? Anybody? Very good. It goes green. Very good. Well done. Good. Good answer. It's very important that you remember that, but you don't need to write an equation for KMNO4 and K2Cr207. Sometimes they write this or this, and sometimes they write this or this. You don't need to be able to write an equation using these, okay? So now we're going to go to the questions, okay? Now we're going to go to the questions and see if we can do them. So this is the questions we want to do today. So we've answered this. This was mixes easily 
So that means it's got hydrogen bonding. Stays orange means it is not an alkene. Purple goes colorless means it can be oxidized. A was ethanol. Okay, A was ethanol. It could have been any alcohol, um, any primary or secondary alcohol. B does not mix, C does not mix. These are hydrocarbons. But this one here, orange turns colorless and purple goes colorless. This means that this one is an alkene. C is an alkane. This was not ethene. This was something called cyclohexene. Uh, because ethene is a gas, and so it would be difficult to do the experiment. And this is uh, hexane, but it doesn't make any difference. This does not react under normal circumstances. Okay, here are the questions for today. What I want to do is to see if somebody can answer these questions. They're all about tests, and the tests are ones which we will be doing today. We'll be looking at these tests today. Uh, we won't be doing this one because it's there are two tests here. I will be doing one of them. So can somebody tell me how a sample of CH3, CH2OH can be distinguished from CH3, COOH by a chemical test? They always expect you to tell me the test and the result. Okay, the test and the result. So can somebody tell me firstly what these chemicals are and how you tell the difference between them? So they were, they were the two chemicals were CH3, whoops, sorry, CH2OH and CH3COOH. Firstly, what are these called? What are these called? Somebody turn on the mic and tell me quickly. You know this easy. Let's let's quickly have a conversation. The first one is ethanol, and the second one is the second one is ethanoic acid. Excellent, excellent. Ethanol and ethanoic acid. Right. How would I tell the difference between them in a test? How would I tell the difference in a test? I've got two tubes, one ethanol, one ethanoic acid. And I want to know the difference between them. I want to have a test which is going to tell me the difference between them. This is a very common question, not necessarily ethanol, maybe propanol, maybe butanol, and carboxylic acid, sorry, um, uh, alkanoic acid. How do I tell the difference? I hope Fatima is coming back in. Somebody tell me how to tell the difference. Uh, okay, now this question is for uh, people with hats. Okay, about half of you have hats or, or hoods. So this question is for somebody with a hat. <laughs> Don't <tell. laughs> You are not allowed to take the hat off. That is very bad. That, that is really naughty. Uh, Michael, your camera has fallen over. Um, somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. How, come on, let's 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 have some interaction, please. How do, how do we uh, how do we tell the difference? Saint Jerome, I'm glad to see you back. So, let let's see if you can answer a question. Fatma, can you hear me? No. Okay, Billion, anybody? Okay. No ideas? Alcanol burn with the blue flame. Alcanol burn with a blue flame while alkanoid alkanoid burn with a yellow sooty flame. Yellow sooty flame. Very good. That's very good. That, that's very good. That's that's certainly one answer. Okay, so we could burn.
There's another way. This is an acid. When we were doing about acids, we, uh, we came across um, reactions of acids and uh, we said that acids give gases with some chemicals. So we could take this and we could react both of them with a carbonate. With a carbonate, this one will fizz. All acids fizz with carbonate. So we could add a carbonate. Calcium carbonate, sodium carbonate, doesn't matter. It would fizz effervescence. I remember somebody from Billion used the word effervescence, one of the lessons. Very good. And it would give off CO2. And that would be uh, the ethanoic acid and not the ethanol. There's another thing we can do, and that is we can use our purple potassium manganate or our orange potassium dichromate and the purple will go colorless and the orange will go green with the alcohol okay so if this is the alcohol and this is the acid then the alcohol burns with the blue flame and the acid burns with the sooty flame if i add the carbonate the fizz and carbon dioxide is the acid the purple potassium manganate the orange potassium dichromate both reacting these ones are both the alcohol any one of these tests work so why am i telling you three well i'm telling you three because sometimes they tell you that they have an unknown chemical and perhaps they try and burn it and they tell you the results and they ask you what it is sometimes they add a carbonate in the question they say some sodium carbonate is added to the chemical this happens it fizzes what is it or i add purple potassium manganate it goes colorless and so on okay so this is three different three different types of tests for the same chemical the next question um the next question is propene this is propane and propene. We've just said that propene will, al that's an alkene, will react with bromine water, but the propane wouldn't, would not. So this here, the reaction here is I add, it's always a chemical test, always give two parts, the chemical test and the answer or the result. So I add bromine water and the propene would go orange to colorless and the propane would stay orange the next question is this one now this one is a little bit more complicated it says organic compound g empirical formula is hco2 and has a molar mass rmm of 90 it reacts with ethanoic acid forming a compound with a pleasant smell. This is a very big clue, okay? This is a very big clue. This, in this question, they have made a mistake, but we'll see what the mistake is in just a minute. Okay, so I'm stopping sharing. So it's HCO2, mass of 90, and it reacts with ethanoic acid. I'll, I'll tell you now that this should say ethanol, not ethanoic. Okay, so here we are. So this question, it tells me that I have HCO2, that's the empirical formula. If you remember when we did empirical formulas, if you were here, 
Um, that was the I'm doctor. That's the one where you put the information, moles, divide, ratio. That's how we find the empirical formula. But the RMM is 90. Then this reacts with ethanol. The question was wrong. Okay, there was a problem with the question. Although it was typed onto KCSE examination paper, it's a mistake. Reacts with ethanol and a few drops of H2SO4 to give sweet smelling. Whoops. Now, what I want you to do is just to have a chat with the person next to you. I want you to try and work out what this is, please. I want, I'm going to have a moment while I get some chemicals ready here. And what I want you to do is just to try, this is quite a, quite a testing question. I want you just to tell me, to be able to tell me in three minutes or four minutes what this is, okay? So you have to work out what this is. This is the empirical formula. We know it's RMM, it's molar mass, so we need to work out what its proper formula is. And then it reacts with ethanol, with concentrated sulfuric acid, to make this sweet smelling, pleasant smelling. I think you probably know what that tells us. This tells us something about the kind of chemical it is. So let's see if you can work out that while I get some chemicals ready. I'll just leave this here while I get some test tubes. Okay, has anybody got some sort of idea? Firstly, what is the molecular formula? Can somebody tell me what the molecular formula is or show me the working on the board if you want? This is a very straightforward question, but I have seen quite a lot of examples of like this on KCSI, uh, KCSE. So would somebody like to tell me what you do with this? Somebody? Go for it. Good, thank you very much. Thank you, well done. So we have a willing volunteer from uh, Billion. Uh, everybody else keep working at it. Try to find it for yourself rather than waiting for somebody else to do it. But let's have a look and see what we've got. So I'm going to pin this. 
uh, so I can see it better. Thank you, Joyce. This is very kind of you. Good, excellent. Right. Now, can you work out what that might be if it reacts with ethanol to give a sweet smelling chemical? Is there any way, can anybody work out what the formula could be? Well done, Joyce, that was great. That was really clear, very, very clear, very good. Can anybody tell me what the formula might be? What, sorry, what the structure might be. Anybody like to do it? No? Okay, let, let me just show you. So you're absolutely right the way you did that, Joyce. It's great, really good. So we know that the formula is H2 C2O4. Now, if it reacts with ethanol to give a sweet smelling chemical, what kind of chemical is it? Do you, do you, have you come across this? Do you know, does anybody know what the sweet smelling or pleasant smelling chemical is? Uh, I hope St. Jerome can hear me, but um, you could type the answer, but uh, does anybody know what kind of chemical that is? You've got one thumbs up and one thumbs down in billion. Yes, I saw. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Appreciate you watching. Okay, I'll tell you. The only chemical... Oh, well done. Who was that? Some, somebody from St. Jerome. Somebody from St. Jerome. That's really good. Is that the guy with the white shirt? Thank you. Really good. That's a man standing up for man. Women always get the answers right. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So it's an ester. Now, if, it's, if this is an ester, if the sweet smelling, pleasant smelling chemical is an ester, then our chemical must be an acid. So, so this must be an acid, an alkanoic acid because an alkanoic acid plus an alcohol it's actually a reversible reaction it's a reaction which goes both ways simultaneously it makes a problem because it means we don't get much product it makes an ester and water so this must be an acid now uh, if this is the alkanoic acid the alkanoic acid has this as its functional group. Now this is CO2H. Oh look, CO2H or HCO2, it doesn't matter. This is twice that. So this chemical is this. That is a very unusual chemical. Um, this is called, it's got two carbons, so it's F. And uh, the alkanoic acids always end in anoic acid. But we need to say something about it having two acids. So we call it ethandioic acid. Di being two, like di. Uh, dibromoethane and so on. Now, I don't think you'd be asked to name that normally, but that's what we'd call it. So that fits this. Two carbons, four oxygens, two hydrogens. As soon as you realize that this is the part that makes it an acid, an alkanoic acid, then it has to be two of those attached to each other back to back. This is also called oxalic acid 
You may have come across oxalic acid. There are some vegetables and some fruits uh, which contain alkanoic acid. Um, I don't ever remember seeing rhubarb, which is a, 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 a plant we eat in the UK. Um, it has a stem, which you can cut up and cook, but the leaves contain too much of this. It's very, very toxic, okay? So that's very good, that's, that's good working. Well done, the guys who noticed it was Esther and worked out the RMM and the formula. Here's the next question, and then we will do a small experiment. So it says, to which class, uh, which homologous series do G and J? Uh, G uh, is uh, alkanoic acid, and J is the pleasant smell, that's the ester. Very well done, very, very good. Um, this is easy, this is, uh, this is I mean, it's for a, <laughs> from a very long time ago, but nevertheless, it's KCSE. Um, this, if you worked it out very quickly, that's an alkane, alkene. You will see that the questions come up fairly regularly. This is describe a chemical test to distinguish between C4H10, C4H8. It is the same question, the same as the one up here for distinguishing propane and propene. It's the same question, basically, because this is alkane, alkene, okay? This here is, look at this, a student heated some ethanoic acid and ethanol together, name the organic chemical product, and describe how you would know it had been made. So this is ethanoic acid. I'll write it on the board so you can see, because some of you are using a phone to see this. Okay. I'll tell you what the question is. So it says, the question says, I start with some ethanoic acid and some ethanol. And ethanol, and it is heated. And they ask what the question, what the chemical is, and uh, how you know that it has been made. So identify how we know that it has been made. And then later it says, how do we know if all the acid has gone? Well, we've just done this question. It's the same sort of question. The reason I am showing you several questions the same is so you see these examinations are not that hard. You learn a few tests and they keep repeating. You just have to identify what test is necessary. So, ethanoic acid and ethanol. Oh, the uh, guy with the white shirt in St. Jerome, he said it's an ester. How do we know that it's an ester? We know it's as, uh, uh, an ester because it has a sweet smell. How do we know if all the acid has gone? Well, if you remember before, we had a, uh, uh, three tests to tell the difference between ethanol and ethanoic acid. And you said we could burn the acid and it would have a smoky, a sooty flame. That's true, that would work. But we could also add the carbonate. And if we add the carbonate, if it fizzes, there is still acid, okay? So it, the question goes on, it says, how do I know all the ethanoic acid has been used up, has reacted? And uh, all I do is I put in some carbonate. If I add some sodium carbonate and it does not fizz, the acid has all gone. Okay, right, I'm going to do a small experiment now. I'm going to go to the other camera. I hope you will be able to hear me okay. Um, I hope that St. Jerome is getting most of this. I think they must be now, which is great. Uh, here we are. So I'm going to do a couple of simple experiments over here. Um, the first thing I have, I'll just move this one a bit closer. The first, uh, the chemicals I have, uh, I, have I haven't I have labelled them here, I should have labelled them. 
Uh, the one in the small tube, the one in the small tube, they're both colorless. This one here is a, an alkene, okay? The one here is an alkene, and the one here is ethanol. And I'm going to do a couple of experiments with them. The first thing is, with the uh, alkene, I'm just going to remind you of the bromine water uh, experiment. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of the alkene, very simple. I'm putting the top on because this stuff smells horrible. Okay, so here this is the alkene. Um, here I have some bromine water. Bromine water, this is quite dilute bromine water. It, um, it has gone a little bit dilute. Uh, normally it would be a bit more orange, but here's the bromine water. And when I add the bromine water to the uh, alkene, the color disappears completely. Now, if I keep going, keep going, it's still going colorless, still going colorless. I'm making that, this is an alkene, so it's making the bromo alcohol. I keep on going. Oh, I'm running out of bromine water. Eventually, there would be enough for it to go yellow. And you may be able to see here, it's quite difficult to see, but there is a small set, it looks like bubbles on the top. And those bubbles are actually the water not mixing with the uh, propene. So if I add some water to this, this isn't water, but it works the same. I get this double, I get this bit where it isn't mixing properly, okay? It isn't mixing at the top properly. That's quite difficult to see on this screen. The other thing that um, alkenes do is that they burn with a smoky flame. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set fire to some ethanol and to some alkene, okay? So the ethanol, I better not take too much because I don't want to set fire to too much stuff. So here is some uh, alcohol, this is ethanol, and I'm going to set fire to it, and uh, you can see it burns with a almost colorless flame. The, the flame is uh, a little, it's mainly blue, it has a little bit of yellow at the top, the little bit of yellow is where it isn't burning completely, okay? Now we're going to compare that with the uh, alkene, okay? So this is the alkene, and we'll see if it's any different. So you've been taught that things with high carbon content burn with a smoky flame. Oh yes, there's a smoky flame. If you look at this, you've got quite a lot of smoke coming out, and it's a very yellow flame. A very yellow flame, which means that it has a high carbon content. The percentage of carbon in this is much greater than in the alcohol. The alcohol burns with a blue flame, the alkene with a much, much more uh, yellow flame. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of little experiments um, with the um, ethanol. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take some ethanol and I'm going to add can you hear me okay uh, I'm going to add some potassium manganate to it now potassium manganate does not easily react with anything so it will go purple it will turn the whole thing purple to start with, okay? But it needs a little bit of acid, so potassium manganate always has... Some, somebody has their microphone on, could could you turn it off please? Somebody has their microphone on, could you turn it off please? So I'm going to add a little, this was a sulfuric acid. So in here now, in here now, I have ethanol and purple potassium manganate and acid, and it's gone brown. 
And it goes brown because it hasn't reacted completely. Sometimes you're told that it goes colourless, and it does go colourless. But to go colourless, sometimes we need to heat it up. So let's try heating it up. I have some hot water here. I'm just going to stand it in some hot water. I'm actually going to add a little bit more acid because I only added a little bit. And we'll see if it will go colourless. At the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the purple, sorry, the orange potassium dichromate. So I have some more alcohol here, some more ethanol. And this time I'm going to add potassium dichromate. And the potassium dichromate is orange and it goes into here. I'm going to add a small amount of sulfuric acid to help it along. And then we're going to leave it to heat up. It is already more yellow than the original orange potassium dichromate. Okay. And we're just going to leave those and we'll come back to them in just a minute. Okay. So back to the other camera. Okay. Um, okay, so what we've got there is two reactions which you need to know about and what is happening. So uh, this is asked quite a lot. Um, what is actually happening um, in this reaction? Uh, what is, oops, sorry, I've moved. Okay, so I have ethanol. Ethanol reacts with an oxidizing agent. Purple potassium manganate, orange potassium dichromate, both oxidizing agents. We write an oxidizing agent like this. We can't write O2 because uh, potassium permanganate, potassium manganate and potassium dichromate do not produce O2 as a gas. It gives oxygen. And what happens is that it takes this and it turns it into ethanoic acid. Ethanol turns into ethanoic acid. We use this to balance the equation. So if I look here at what's missing, uh, here I have, and it's useful to do this, I have two carbons, I have six hydrogens and one oxygen. Over here I have two carbons, three, four, four hydrogens and two oxygens. So this is the problem. What has happened here? These two have changed. When hydrogen is lost from an organic chemical, it always turns up in water. Okay, every time, if you lose hydrogens, it will make water here. If you look at the oxygens now, now I, uh, on this side of the equation, I now have six, so that's okay. But now I have one, two, three oxygens. Well, I have one here and three here, so I have to go two of those. So this is the equation. There, that's the equation for it reacting. Let's go back to the other camera and see the results. Okay, so this is, this is oxidation, and this square bracket here means oxygen from an oxidizing agent, and it's important that you know that. Going back to the other camera, let's see what's happened. Wow, okay. This one was the potassium manganate seven and it has gone completely colorless. This one here, it's quite difficult to see the color. Uh, I hope you can see it. It actually looks more blue than green and it can go blue. Uh, so it goes from orange, this is the orange potassium dichromate. This is it, this is the color it was before. It was this color and it has gone from orange through to actually blue. Now. In KCSE examinations, they have not given credit for blue. It does go blue, but they have given credit for green. Okay, so I'm going back to the other camera. 
So this is the oxidizing agent. That is purple potassium manganate or orange potassium dichromate. When the purple goes colorless or the orange goes green, that is what is happening up here, okay? The oxygen here is from an oxidizing agent. So that's what's happening. They ask quite a lot of questions about that. What I'm going to do next time is I'm going to try, you've got some questions which I, which I have sent to the supervisors and to Sophia, uh, the other questions from today's uh, lesson. And you can have a go at those. I will send the answers through to the supervisors so you can see them and you could have a go yourselves if you want. Next time, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to link up all the chemicals we have like this. So I'm going to say, if I have an alkene, how do I turn it into an alcohol? An al, sorry, you call it an alkanol. My apologies. We call it something slightly different in the UK. How do I turn an alkanol into an alkanoic acid? How do I turn these two into an ester? How do I turn this one into an alkane? We call this a synthetic root. This is a, a route, a way, a path from one chemical to another. And what we will do is we will look at how we do all of these. So really quickly, you get to know exactly how to do it. And then we will do questions like the one which I will just show you here. Here. You quite often get chemicals like, uh, questions like this, where you're asked how you go from glucose to ethanol, ethanol to pure ethanol, there, that's manganate seven, that's purple potassium manganate. Uh, what happens with concentrated sulfuric acid and so on, okay? So these all, these sort of questions fit what I've got behind me on the screen, okay? All right, so it's time for me to go and for some other people, young people to come in here. Uh, they are going to be doing chemistry too, uh, but we are doing transition metals with them. Uh, this is the center part of the um, of the periodic table. Uh, I wish you could come and do a practical um, to do some actual experimentation here because then it would mean more sense. But thank you very much to those people who contributed today, uh, who had a go. I really appreciate that. And um, in about three weeks, we will have another quiz. The quiz will be much harder uh, because you were too clever last time. So we will make it much, much harder. And there will still be some stupid questions, um, but I will make sure that it is quite testing. And then there will be a definite winner, okay? But for now, I hope that you have a good day and the sun shines on you and you get some good food, okay? So bye-bye from- Thank you, thank you, good wishes. Okay, bye-bye everybody. Bye -bye.